So I'm a cognitive psychologist and an artist, and this is about how these worlds intersect. And it all starts with perception. Perception is amazing. Um, and we take for granted our ability to perceive the world, but it's not simple at all. Especially when you think about that we have a three-dimensional world that is projected as a two-dimensional retinal image, and yet we still have a perception that's three-dimensional. And so somehow, our brains has to pro uh, process these 2D images and make sense of it. And so how are we able to make sense of the world and see, and see something that's coherent? Um, a big part of our visual system is our ability to group in the features, its ability to organize the in incoming information. And one idea about how we do this was proposed by the Gazzal psychologist. The whole is different than the sum of its parts. That the whole, the dog in this image, is uh, bears no resemblance to the ink splotches that created it. And so this reinforces the idea that perception requires some sort of perceptual, uh, perceptual organization or grouping. And the Gestalt psychologist put forth principles about how we group, and these are some of them. That we group similar things together, that we group things that are close together, um, and, <clears throat> and so uh, these ideas really fascinated me, and I began to think and wonder, can these principles be put in conflict with each other in order to manipulate the perceptual system? And so I spent about a year in my studio working with imagery based on these principles with no luck in really achieving this goal. And it was until I read this paper by Irving Rock where they presented observers with uh, strings of light in the dark that are configured in a way that you perceive them as columns, and it, the whole display rotates about its center, and they keep rotating it until you perceive those columns as rows. And so I use this idea to create portraits where when you view it from up close, you view them as abstract, um, you, you can uh, perceive them as columns, but when you perceive them from the side, the spaces become perceptually closer. And so then you can perceive the whole. And in this case, this is Barack Obama, if you can't see. You can also then start um, playing with these different principles and using them to reinforce these columns and, um, and without really affecting how the portrait is seen uh, from the side. And you can even do that in ways where you don't have discrete shapes. And then you just have lines, and there's, there's less variation between them yet you can still accomplish that from the side you have this um, very clear perception of uh, the whole. Thank you.